and happy first anniversary. A year ago today, I made my debut on the HQ app, and we were shut down a few days later, but we're back in business, baby. Let me just double check here. Okay. Welcome back to HQ Trivia, yet again under new management. We're coming to you live and in portrait mode from HQ Universal Studios here in Los Angeles, California. And you're joining in with, oh, oh wow, just short of 200 players. Brilliant. Just fantastic. Including, but not limited to, Ron, Uncle Ron 1230, Lish, my friend Aaron, the professor of comedy, Jack Hardman, Mayala, and the folks at the Trivia Revolution. And it's a bit crowd to be sure, but real quick, if you have friends that have already jailbroken the app, tell them to join in right now. I am your friendly neighborhood HQ man, the host with the barbecue beef roast, the quiz step daddy, Fro Vid Letterman, and former announcer for Scott Rogowski, Parad Muhammad. And yes, that is my name, and yes, I'm going to get a stage name if I become famous. If you're playing this game, you've downloaded the app before, but you also haven't played it in about a year. So here's your refresher on how the game goes. As usual, I'm going to give you 12 multiple choice general knowledge trivia questions that go from easy to hard. You have 10 seconds to tap your answer. If you get it right, you move on to the next question. If you don't, you should have one extra life that you can use in the game, except on the final question, to stay in the game. You also have two erasers that you could use any time in the game to remove wrong, wrong answer per question. And if you think you tapped the wrong answer and there's still some time left, you can swap your answer until time is up. If your answer is wrong, you're out of extra lives or choose not to use your extra life, though you really should use them, it's free. I'm afraid you would be eliminated for tonight's game. Now, if you answer all 12 questions correctly, you will win or split the cash prize of 25 dang dollars and be among the first winners of HQ Trivia in 2024 and hopefully not the last winners overall, knock on wood. Now, a quick reminder, this is not an official HQ Trivia game nor is this produced by HQ Trivia LLC. We do not have your money from the original edition of the game, I'm afraid. Think of it like we broke into an abandoned theater and we decided to put on a show that also gave away cash. Also, this is an experimental game and it's my first game. It's for my first time hosting HQ Trivia in a year, so there may be a tech issue or flub here and there. Thank you so much for your patience in advance. And don't forget, Words is coming up in just under a half hour, hosted by the word nerd court jester, yours truly, followed by a special broadcast about the history of HQ at the top of the hour right afterwards. Anyway, you're back. Glad I'm back. Glad you're back too. So let's do this. Here is Q1, a video question right off the bat. This cartoon recently entered the public domain. What's its name? All aboard, Michael Mouse, or Steamboat Willie? All right, this classic cartoon released in 1988 is known as one of the first to feature a little known character named Mickey Mouse. I don't think I'm familiar with that. It should have entered the public domain in 1986, but two changes to the copyright laws kept it in the hands uh, of the character's parent company almost 40 years later. On January 1st, 2024, though, it was indisputable that Steamboat Willie became a part of the public domain. And so what we got there? 120 of you got that one right. Uh, a few of you got that one incorrect there, but you know, I mean, it's, a, it's a, it wasn't that, it was, it, was, uh, it was in the news, but it may not have been, you know, in your radar. That's fine. Be sure to use your extra lives though. Hope, to hope you stick in it uh, to win it there. I'm sure there are a lot of younger people out there who know who Mickey Mouse is, but who couldn't tell you what a steamboat was. So let's chug along the Mississippi to Q2. Another video question. Oh, gosh, going on right Beautiful. The unexpected use of this song Commonly known as what? Ashley, a mistake, or a riff. Alrighty. Oh, I was just getting into it there. The song in this question was indeed Never Gonna Give You Up, the 1987 chart topper by Rick Astley. Starting in around 2006, though, online jokesters started to trick other people into clicking a link to the Rick Astley music video when expecting to see something else. That trick was eventually called a Rick Roll. Rick Roll is indeed the correct answer. And wow, a vast majority of you got that one right. Fantastic. Marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. So not a lot of you, um, uh, not a lot of you were uh, rolled over by that question right there. So a lot of you were no strangers to it. The Rick Roll supposedly traces back to the website 4chan. Now those kids are always starting something. Anyway, we know the game and we're going to play it. So here is Q3. Which of these movies won the Academy Award for Best Picture? Black Panther, Alfredo's on Valley, or Fifty Shades of Grey. 
Anybody having any Oscar parties from, uh, this year? Kind of want to go to one. Anyway, if you thought that Fifty Shades of Grey won the Oscar for Best Picture, then this might hurt a bit, though you'd probably like that. Black Panther was nominated for Best Picture, but it didn't win. That leaves only the 1941 all-time classic, How Green Was My Valley. How Green Was My Valley is indeed the correct answer. And, yep, it looks like 68% of you got that. Oh, it's a little savage. You know, it was like, it was like half and half there, but, uh, you know, we're, 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 I'm, I'm not going to call it savage just yet, just yet. Now, Hal Green's Our Valley faced off some stiff competition, beating both Citizen Kane and the Maltese Falcon. All right, you're doing brilliantly, and we've gone through a full quarter of the game. Three questions down, nine to go. It's time for Q. What network recently returned dozens of Emmys that were awarded under fake names? CBS, ESPN, or the History Channel? The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, the organization that awards the Emmys, had a rule where on-air talent could only win in individual categories. The upper management of the TV show College Game Day still gave their reporters trophies by using fake names under the same initials. College Game Day is a series on ESPN. ESPN is the right answer, and wow, a vast majority of you got that one right. Beautiful. Fan dang tastic. Not a lot of you uh, were canceled on that one there. Some of the fake names included Lee Clark, Clark for Lee Corsau, Wendy Nix for Wendy Nixon, and Stephen Ponder for Sam Ponder. The lesson here is don't mess with the Emmys. Anyway, moving right along, it is now time for ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, question five, question five, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, question five. Anyway, here's Q5. <clears throat> For children. Yes, of course. Yes. Lego. Yes, this is live. I can read the chat there as well. Q5. At standard pressure, water is at 100 degrees. Water at 100 degrees Kelvin is at what state of matter? Solid, liquid, or gas? Unlike Jumping Jack Flash, who is always a gas, gas, gas. If you remember science class in school, you know that Kelvin degrees and, cel and Celsius are equal units, but at different values. Sorry, Kelvin degrees Celsius, I should say. 100 degrees Kelvin is roughly equivalent to negative 170 degrees Celsius or negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit. That temperature, water would be in the form of ice. So that is a solid. Solid is indeed the correct answer. And what do we got here? Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay. That is a savage question. That's what I'm calling a savage question right there. Fantastic. I mean, not fantastic for everybody who got that wrong, but, you know, it's my first savage question. I actually announced because last year I didn't get to do that. I forgot. Anyway. Yeah, I think it was around 100 degrees Kelvin last weekend in Chicago. Remember, it was Kelvin, not Celsius there. Anyway, let's get some sixes and ice cubes and em emojis going on in the chat because it is now time for Q6. Which continent spans all four hemispheres? Africa, Antarctica, or Europe? This is not Celebrity Jeopardy, so Asia is not one of the options there. All righty. All three of these continents are in the eastern and western hemispheres. Antarctica sounds like a good trick question for this, but it surrounds the South Pole, so it's all in the Southern Hemisphere. The reverse is true for Europe. It's all up in the Northern Hemisphere. The only continent that crosses both the equator and the prime meridian, placing it in all four hemispheres, is Africa. Africa is indeed the correct answer. And wow, a vast majority of you got that one right. That is beautiful. Great to see there are some great geographic minds out there. Marvelous. Stupendous. You know where we are right now? We are now halfway through the game, and that can only mean one thing. It's time for a sanitizer break. Let me just get my sanitizer here. There you go. Don't get caught up in the microphone. Sanitizer break. Sanitizer break. Oh, yeah. So clean. There you go. <clears throat> Let's continue on with Q7. Another media question, so take a look at this. Who painted this? Claude Monet, Edouard Manet, or Leonardo da Vinci? No, they are not Ninja Turtles, though. So. All righty then. This artwork is called Le Déjeuner sous l'herbe, or in English, Luncheon on the Grass. Both Monet and Manet had paintings titled that, but this painting was the original, painted by Edouard Manet. Manet is indeed the correct answer. And what do we got here? Most of you got that one right. A lot of you were on the Monet with Manet. Fantastic. That's brilliant there. 31 of you got that one right. All righty then. You know, I could use a nice beverage. So uh, where's Nate the Eight, huh? Where's Nate? Ah, oh, there he is. Fantastic. <laughs> mm. Cheers to you, Nate. Beautiful. So the man, woman, or, alive, or child alive today that doesn't enjoy a delicious beverage. Anyway, here is Q... Uh-oh. Here is Q8. 
Which of these words appears in the Eighth Amendment of the United States Constitution? Bail, jury, or uncommon? Hmm, I don't see a question. I'm going to assume that the game is going on as planned, even though I do see that we have zero people. That's not good. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, maybe that's just me, because I also don't see that there are any answers here. I'm just going to keep on going and vamping until we find out what the heck is going on here. I'm not able to rejoin the game either. That's not good. That's no good. Okay. Oh, dear. Ah, cripes. Okay, well, um, if anybody's able to watch this, I don't think anybody is right now, but um, hopefully uh, we'll be able to get this uh, back up and running very, very soon. It looks like we're going to start from the beginning. Okay, well, there you go. Um, Welcome back. <laughs> Appear to have gotten a bit of a, uh, uh, a bit of a, uh, a bit of a disconnection there. So it looks like we are going to either start from the beginning or, yeah, we're going to start from the beginning. All right. So we're going to ask the same <laughs> nine questions. Um, this is where we should have had like backup questions. All right. Anyway. Uh oh, what happened? What happened? That's all right. No, it's not, I have no problem with that here. I, uh oh says something went wrong. I can't log back in. Is anybody else, or is everybody else gone too? Let's try this again. Oh, no. Let me try logging. Let me just try getting out of the HQ app. And... Oh, jeez. Reschedule? Gotcha. 30 minutes. Okay. Son of a beasting. Oh, my God. <laughs> we were so close. Oh, man. All righty. Well, you know what? It's better than the glitchy game. I'll tell you that much right here. Um, <laughs> at, least people were able to at least people were able to see me, hear me, and do work with all the questions here. But, yeah. Okay. We'll try again for 6.30 and words at 7, I'm guessing, and then the commemoration at 7.30. Okay. Or, you know, adjust it for your time zone. I'm just going to go all the way back. Okay, I am going to take off the suit jacket because I am sweating like a cow. Um, <laughs> I'm also going to mute myself. Uh, I'll just go back. I'll just head on back to my computer, but I'll keep this uh, stream going. So.
Alrighty. No, not Anna. There's never any trouble here in Bobbleland. Tis I, the Word Court Jester, welcome you back to HQ Words. Glad you could make it. Get yourself comfortable and kick up a chair. It's been a while, so if you forgot how this game is played, here's the skinny and how HQ Word works. First, you'll be given a wheel. Spin it to get a free letter that'll be revealed throughout the game. Next, I'll give you clues to the 12 word puzzles. Use the clue your smart minds and the keypad at the bottom within 20 seconds to tap out the letters of the answer. If you guess the wrong letter, you'll get a strike. If you use up all your strikes, you're out for the night. But you got an extra life, though, so you can use it to get a second chance, except in the final puzzle. If you solve all the puzzles, you win or share the cash prize. All right? You got this. Anyway, I should get out of this moment before a windstorm blows it away. See you on the other side. There's never, 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 never any trouble here in Bubble and Bubble. Up, up, a bird, bird, bird. The bird is the word. Up, up, a bird, bird, bird. Hey, everyone. I am not, oh, I am not Anna Royce, but I know. I stand on the shoulders of giants. 
I am indebted to the original hosts of the Games of HQ for their influence and inspiration. Mad respect to Anna, Timothy Dunn, and the rest of the original HQ Words team, including and especially HQ's co-founder, the late Colin Kroll. In any event, let's have some fun tonight. This is HQ Words, the game where the fastest fickle figures of what else try it again? Let's the fastest fickle fingers of fate formulate phrases and phonics with fun and frivolity with me, Farad Muhammad. And I am joined by 124 of my fellow word nerds here on the game, including but not limited to H Quintessential and Sky Pierce. And Chad 1M, apparently. Just a quick side note, this independently made fan game is not produced by HQ Trivia LLC, and I'm afraid we do not have the winnings from the originally produced version of the game. We're like a pirate radio station with a thesaurus. Tonight, I have 12 brain-scrambling word puzzles for you, along with 10 strikes, but don't spend all those strikes in one place. If you solve all the puzzles correctly, you will win or share the cash prize of 25 dang dollars. If you run out of strikes, you should have an extra life on hand to get back into the game once per game, except on the final puzzle. So, yeah, use it. It's free. <clears throat> anyway, it is now time for that lovely part of the game where you get to spin a wheel of letters around my face. So spin, spin, spin. Now, super spins aren't available just, just yet, so you just get one letter. Oh, that's a nice one. Alrighty. Are you ready to make mincemeat of these puzzles with the power of typography? Well, it's time for the first puzzle of the game. I believe in you. And I believe in believe. Last year. Anyway, let's get started with an easy one just to re-familiarize yourself with how this game is played. With that said, your first clue is a movie mashup. 